All right, guys, we're back and on page four, the power of magnetic force. If you've ever experimented with magnets, you know a little bit about how magnetic force works. Magnetic force causes a magnet to be attracted to iron or steel objects. That's why you can use a magnet to pick up a steel paper clip. Magnets can be both attracted, let's look at our vocabulary here, meaning to pull something closer, and repelled, meaning to push it away by other magnets. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. When the pole of one magnet gets close to the pole of another magnet, the magnetic fields around them affect each other. Let's look at fields, because this isn't like a field of corn. The field is the area where a force such as electricity, gravity, or magnetism is active. If you place the pole of one magnet next to the south pole of another, the opposite poles will be attracted to each other. So they'll try to come together. They will stick together. If you put two south or two north poles next to each other, the poles will repel each other. They will push each other away. These magnetic reactions are what make a maglev train work. So you can see over here, unlike poles attract, so north and south want to come together. South and south repel. They want to push each other away. Magnets can be both attracted to and repelled by other magnets, depending on which pole. All right, let's look at our question here. This page is on a very attractive subject, magnets. Select the highlighted sentence that best describes how you can tell whether an object has magnetic force. Well, we know in order to have magnetic force or to be a magnet, it has to have certain characteristics, right? Such as, let's see, if you ever experienced magnets, you know a little bit about magnetic force. That doesn't tell me anything. Magnetic force causes a magnet to be attracted to iron or steel. Oh, magnetic force. I know they do need to be iron or steel. Not everything's a magnet. Plastic doesn't have a magnetic force. That's why you can use to pick up a steel paper clip. Then it goes into how they repel each other and attract. So I think here, talking about the force around it and being iron or steel is our best choice. And he said, right on. What do all magnets have in common? They are all attracted to the North Pole. They all have a North and South Pole, or they all have the ability to attract aluminum objects. Well, we know we talked about a north and a south pole, not just a north pole. They all have a north and south. We do know that. And they're attracted to aluminum. It didn't say anything about aluminum. It said iron and steel. He said, excellent. Which statement is true of magnetic poles? Similar poles repel each other. Similar meaning like north, north, south, south. Opposite poles both attract and repel each other. So north-south would both attract and repel, attract and repel, or opposite poles repel or push each other away. Well, let's look back at this section. The north pole of one with the south of the other, so opposites, they're attracted. So this says similar poles repel, opposite poles attract and repel. Well, this just says they attract, not repel. And it says here, opposite poles repel. Well, here it says attract. Let's double check that similar poles do repel, blah, repel by continuing to read. Says, if you put two south or two north, those would be similar. Those will repel each other. Oh, good. That backs up what we were thinking there. I'm going to click send. And he said, right on. And we're done with that section. On to page five. Magnets levitate the train. The wheels of an ordinary train ride on steel tracks, but maglev trains are different. They don't have wheels. Instead, the trains glide above a single steel track called a guideway. One type of maglev train has C-shaped arms that wrap around the guideway. Magnets are placed along the arms and along the underside of the guideway. These magnets are not like the ones holding photos on your refrigerator. They are electromagnets, which only work when electricity passes through them. At rest, the body of the maglev train rests on the guideway. But when the magnets on the arms and guideway are activated, their poles become opposite and attract. This attraction causes a train to lift up to eight inches off the track. It's called electromagnetic suspension. For the train to remain afloat, the magnetic force must be constantly adjusted. This is done by varying the amount of electricity sent through wires to the magnets. Magnetic force is too weak, gravity wins, and the train drops back onto the track. But magnetic force is too strong, the arms of the train stick to the guideway and the train will not move. So over here, they give us a diagram, another great text feature of how electromagnetic suspension works. Here you can see you have those C-shaped arms coming down. There, here's the guideway. 
There's an eight inch space that they're lifting it up. And these are the electromagnets. See north, south, north, south here. So let's click on him. One of the biggest things about understanding maglev trains is how they're different from ordinary trains. What do, ma or, sorry, what do ordinary trains have that maglev trains don't have? C-shaped arms. Well, I know that was something maglev trains have. A steel guideway or wheels. It says the wheels of an ordinary train ride on steel tracks, but maglev trains are different. They don't have wheels. Instead, they guide along a single steel track called a guideway. So I know that the maglev one had C-shaped arms. They both have a steel guide, or the maglev has a steel guideway, and that the maglev doesn't have wheels, but an ordinary train does. So an ordinary train has wheels. It's even stranger than I thought. A train with no wheels. Let's try to figure out what's going on. What lifts a maglev train? Magnets on the train's arms and on the guideway, C-shaped arms that wrap around the train, or electricity passing through a single steel track. Let's look. At rest, the body of the maglev train rests on the guideway, but when the magnets on the arms and guideway are activated, their poles become opposite and attract. This attraction causes the train to lift up eight inches off the track. It's called electromagnetic suspension. So we have magnets right on the arms and the guideway that are activated. The opposite poles of the magnets on the arms and guideways are attracted to each other, so the train lifts up in the air. But these aren't just normal magnets. Electromagnets are special because magnetic force is created by sending electricity through wires to the magnets. What'll happen if magnetic force is too weak? Oh, I remember us reading that, I think, in the last paragraph. It says it's done by varying the amount of electricity. If the magnetic force is too weak, gravity wins and the train drops back onto the track. Let's see if that is over here. The train will stay afloat. What just said it was gonna fall onto the track. The force of gravity will make the trains fall onto the guideway or the arms of the train will stick to the guideway. Well, this is saying that it would fall back to the track. So I'm gonna go with the middle answer here for weakness. Is that exactly? But if the train's force is too strong, that's a problem too, and the train will not move. Maglev trains sound pretty awesome, but they have problems too. I'm guessing we're about to find out some of their problems. How would you feel about riding on a magnet train? Um, I think I would feel... I'm kind of interested. You see my choice. I'm going with interested. I would be interested in learning about why would I feel interested? Because I have never ridden on this type of train before. I think it is interesting how they use magnetic. Let's see, electromagnetic suspension to work. And your answer would be very different, might be longer than mine. You might have more information in yours. I just was filling something out real quick. Going to our next and last page here. Using magnets to move a train. Ordinary trains use fossil fuel engines to propel them, but a maglev train uses magnetic force to move the floating train along as well as to lift it. Think about how you can use one magnet to push or pull another magnet across a table. Magnets can push and pull a train in much the same way. The guideway of a maglev train has a long line of electromagnets. An electric current flows through them and changes which poles are north and which are south. When a north pole magnet on the train approaches a south pole magnet on the guideway, the magnets attract. They pull the train forward. When two south pole magnets or two north pole magnets in the back of the train repel each other, they push the train ahead. Because there's no friction between the floating train and the guideway, the train is easy to move. It glides along reaching speeds of almost 300 miles per hour. It says testing one, two, three. 
Maglev trains have the potential to change transportation for the better, but today there are only a few maglev systems in operation. Engineers are using these systems to test how well maglevs work. They will use what they learn to improve maglev systems. One day, engineers believe that maglev trains will link cities that are thousands of miles apart. At speeds of up to 300 miles per hour, these trips would last just a few hours. So there's a maglev train traveling at nearly 300 miles per hour through Shanghai, China. So they have one over in China. All right, let's do our last questions for a read to understand section. What is a maglev train and how does it work? We still don't know how a maglev train moves. The maglev train has magnets on the underside of its arms. Where are the other magnets? On the train's guideway, on the train's engine, or on the train's electrical current? I'm gonna look back here in our second paragraph. It says the guideway of a maglev train has a long line of electromagnets. So do we have guideway over here? Yes, we do. She said, good job. What happens when a magnet on the train gets near a magnet on the guideway with the opposite pole? So let's look at what the opposite ones do. So when a north pole magnet on the train approaches a south pole magnet on the guideway, the magnets attract. They pull the train forward. North and south are opposites and they want opposite. So let's see if this works. The magnets on the train and guideway push each other away. Well, this says they attract. They pull the train forward. Well, it does say they pull the train forward, so I like that, but I'm gonna read the last one. They pull on the guideway magnet changes to the same pull on the train magnet. No, they don't change at that point, but they do pull it forward. Remember, magnets with unlike poles attract or pull at each other. That pulling helps make the train move forward. And magnets in the back of the train repel each other and push the train forward. How do the magnets on the guideway keep the train moving? It says they change